Hello, I'm Joe Dallas, and these are some points on recovery from sexual sin from the game plan. Let's talk today about recovery from homosexuality and how the change happens, a controversial subject today. Well, there's a struggle during that process, no question about it. When someone repents of homosexual sin, there is a process of change. But exactly what do we mean by change? Does that mean that because there is a struggle, there is no change whatsoever? Or because there is a change, there is no struggle whatsoever? It's not quite that simple. We do change significantly any time we repent of a sin, sexual or otherwise. The power that our sins have had over us is broken. We no longer have to give in to them. Their influence over us is felt less and less. It's present, but it's not predominant. And our perspective changes as we realize that we are living with a hope of eternal life. And although we're beset by sin to some degree, we're no longer its slaves. Well, homosexuality is no different in that sense. Like all sinful tendencies, homosexual attractions don't need to rule you or continue to be a predominant force in your life if you've been involved in that sin. Now, specifically, if you repent of that behavior, you can expect change to occur in one or all of four ways. First, a change in behavior. Now, some people argue that behavioral change isn't really change at all, but they're wrong. When a person's behavior changes, his life changes. Now, for example, if a man has been an alcoholic for 20 years, then joins Alcoholics Anonymous and stays sober, he has definitely changed. His sobriety is going to have an impact on every part of his life. It's going to improve his attitude, his relationships, his job performance. Now, will an occasional desire for a drink nullify his claim to have changed? Of course not. Well, it's the same with you. If you've been involved in homosexuality and you reach a point of consistent abstinence from that sin, you will have changed. Your conscience, your confidence, your self-control are all going to be affected by your abstinence. And there's no area of your life that will not feel the impact of that. Secondly, you can experience a change in the frequency of homosexual desires. Now, one of the first noticeable changes my clients report has to do with the frequency of their attractions. Generally, they notice they're less often aroused by people of the same sex. Now, they don't deny that that arousal still may be there as a temptation, but it's not nearly as strong as it used to be. They're not walking around with their eyes closed either. Their episodes of attraction to other people are just rarer than they used to be. So you can realistically expect then that not only will your behavior change, but the frequency of homosexual temptations will change as well. Third, you will notice a change in the intensity of these attractions. The attractions will become less powerful, less intense, and much easier to shrug off. And that too is a major change. One male client of mine put it this way. He said, I used to be overwhelmed with lust when I'd see a good looking guy. Now I look and I'll notice the fact that he's handsome, but I don't feel nearly as turned on as I used to. If I do get aroused, which happens less and less, it's not so strong. It used to be like, wow, now it's like, oh. And you know there's quite a difference between wow and oh. And finally, you'll notice a change in your perspective. Some people are so obsessed with their homosexuality that their obsession is a bigger problem than their homosexual attractions. Healing for these people begins when they realize that same-sex lust isn't the end of the world. They see it for what it really is. It's another manifestation of fallen nature. The difference between obsession with homosexuality and the acknowledgement of it as a temptation to confess and repent of is one of the crucial distinctions that a man or a woman in recovery makes. Now, a common question arises, is it possible for someone who has been homosexual to repent and never again be attracted to the same sex and only be attracted to the opposite sex? Well, of course it's possible. But the probability of heterosexual desires either emerging or returning depends to a large extent on your own sexual history. Some people have always been exclusively homosexual. They've never had attractions to the opposite sex. Others have, to some degree, had such attractions so that when the person who has had them repents, those attractions are reawakened. When the person who has not had them in the first place repents, then those attractions are birthed in the individual. Now, once a person has experienced those changes, is it possible for them to ever return to homosexual sin? This is something all of us have to face. 
To repent of a sin is not to guarantee that you will never be tempted towards that sin again. So a wise person, when he or she repents, makes provision to make sure that they stay on track, remain spiritually motivated, and have proper accountability so they're less likely to return to that sin. Whatever the mind has recorded, unfortunately, can be replayed so that the individual at some point later in life may remember that sin and unfortunately be attracted to it. So I'm convinced that anyone who has had a homosexual experience can, under certain conditions, be tempted towards that experience again. That doesn't mean a person automatically will be tempted, and it certainly doesn't mean he has to yield to that temptation. Some people who've been homosexually oriented in the past later have no attractions at all to the same sex and no desire for any kind of homosexual contact. Other people find that occasionally those desires arise and they learn to resist them when they do arise. In the long run, you can expect to grow. You can expect your sexually sinful tendencies to diminish in both their frequency and their intensity. You can expect your perspective to change radically as you expand your vision and reach your potential. And these expectations form a proper, realistic, and hopeful viewpoint of the growth process. Combined with a motivation born of love and a dissatisfaction with anything less than God's best, they provide you with the inner resources you need for healing.